this is Dr. Ray Ramirez from Lakeview Veterinary Clinic, helping your pet live the best life possible for as long as possible. And this is take three, so you can go look at the blooper side and see what other things we had to do to get to this side. Maybe you were on take four or five. But anyway, so you were saying there, why is Dr. Ramirez wearing the cone of shame here? And it's to just demonstrate what you need to do to help your pet as you're either dealing with this or, first of all, why do we even have one of these things? It's not so they can be a star on the movie Up. It's to keep them from licking at their paw or their, their back legs or maybe something on the tail or something on their body. Either they've just had surgery or maybe there's a growth or something that we need them to leave alone for a little bit so we can get it to heal and they just won't, won't stop. So we have to put one of these little cones of shame or in the medical biz we call it an Elizabethan collar around them so that they can't do that. So how do we put this together and how do we adjust it? I will say, not that I've been wearing this all day, however, this is kind of hard to see around and stuff and it echoes a bit as you see this, so it's it can be a little bit distracting as you get used to it. So it doesn't surprise me that your pets may take a little bit of time. So, But let's look at this because there are ways that you can adjust the size if it's too big or small. There's little areas here and I'll show that here in a minute as we take this off. Probably if your pet's wearing glasses, you should probably take the glasses off too. So, but anyway, so this is the Elizabethan collar or the cone of shame. But what we're going to look at is if you can, as you can see here, there's two additional kind of strips of, of little um, plastic cutouts to help to adjust the size. This makes a fairly wide opening here, but if we wanted it a little bit narrower, because we have a dog with a narrower face, we can do that. So what we do is we take this long strip of plastic here and we just kind of simply pull it out. I'll show you what that looks like here in a minute as we put it back together. And so then what we do is we come up here to this section. Okay, so we want it, now it's a bit narrower. And so we want to put this back together. So what we do, we have these little square edges, and what we're going to do is come up and thread this long path plastic piece in through there to help hold it in place. And I'll show you what that looks like here. So kind of, I think, using this angle make it easy. So I'm finding this little strip here through the hollow piece, or through this little square. So we're pushing this plastic piece down. You can see it here, and so then we push it back up. And then we want to make sure that we catch this part as well, this kind of top section, so it helps to hold that strip in place, like so. And then we come to the next little section. We're pushing down on here, and we're coming up in this little segment, okay? Kind of making like a little threading type of action. And we're doing the same thing on this top section of this longer one. And we're coming back up here. I apologize, my fat finger is probably getting in the way there. There we go. But it's like, what do we do with this part up here? Well, in this particular collar, they've, you've got, you can see this little slot here, but there's no corresponding one here. That's exactly for this extra little tab that you can kind of slide it up and it's not exposed. And we'll usually put a piece of tape across there as well. So now you've got a nice little collar that you can put on your own head or your children's head maybe, um, but put on your dog primarily. So the question is, well, how do we get to this whole stage in the first place? So we'll begin with a little bit smaller collar so that we can demonstrate. Same type of thing. You'll see the long thread piece, this circular part, which will eventually come around here, okay? And you kind of notice I switched that around, so this part with the tab always goes on the outside, okay? And then we've got these other little tabs which either go around the collar or what we'll use a lot of times is a little piece of either shoestring or gauze, a little bit gentler, and then tie it in a bow tie, shoestring tie, around their neck to help keep it nice and snug. Or you can also use just that little shoestring and just tie these loops to the collar itself. Okay, so a couple of ways to attach it so that your pet can't slip it off. If you have a harness, that's even better. So how do we put this together? So we've got this slit around, 
we're going to do this part again so that the sliding around stays in place. So we're kind of coming on the outside here of the loop. We're pushing down through the opening and into that little slot, kind of tab A into slot B. And then on the underside, we're taking tab A and going into slot C. Okay. Obviously, you can tell this one hasn't been done yet because I'm having trouble getting it into slot C. And see, when you concentrate, if you use your tongue, which I know you can't see, and I'm trying to show the camera here and see at the same time. It's a little bit of a challenge. Okay, come on. So I'm going to just take my fingernail. Ah, and just pop the plastic there a little bit. It seemed like it was a little attached. Now it slides right through, and you can see that come out. So we just take that and just kind of pull it tight like that. Okay, and then we do the same thing. So that was what? Slot B and C. So now we're at slot D. Still got tab A here. Slot D and then slot E. I'm going to stick my little thumbnail in there, make sure it's not too, too difficult. And there we are. And now we've got tab A. And this is slot B, C, D, E. This is slot F. This is our extra one so that this tab isn't stuck out here. So we're just going to sneak it in there to tab F. Okay? So now we've got our nice little slot here with our size. So how do we do these little gadgets? So we've been watching our tabs. You can see a similar type of design here. So we've got tab, this was A through F. So we're going to go tab G, and we've got slot H and I. And we're going to use both of them. So we're going to slip this kind of over the top. And you'll see why in a minute, because then when we go through this, this will end up on the outside so it's not rubbing up against your pet's uh, head and neck on the inside here. So we're going to take tab G, going into tab I. And it's a little bit easier if you kind of come a little bit at an angle, because you can see it has these little slots here. So you come here, and then push in on this one. And you see how that kind of comes out? And you're kind of lifting my thumb up and then pulling tab, or this, the little slot, slot or what would you call this thing, the sleeve I guess, on this tab G, pulling it and kind of engaging it so it doesn't slip down. So now it's not going to slip out. Okay? And that holds it. And you can see all these little plastic prickly parts. If we did started the other way, came on the inside, this would be on the inside rubbing against your pet's uh, neck and face. So as you can imagine, well maybe you can't imagine unless you've put one of these on, but it would be a little bit uh, scratching to your face, so you don't want to do that. So then we're going to do the same thing here. So take and tab, what are we at? G, H, and I. We can probably use the same letters because it's the exact same thing. So we take tab G, go into slot H here, kind of slip that around, and then push it up into slot I, and then kind of hooking up with my thumb finger and pulling that back, and there we go. So now we've got a little cone for a little head to pop in there so that he doesn't or she does not get at our incision that we're trying to keep them away from or whatever it is. And so this helps them to heal better so that we can help them live longer, which of course is our ultimate goal here at Lakeview Veterinary Clinic, where we help our pets live the best life possible for as long as possible. So if you have a, a pet that needs an e-collar, go ahead and talk to your regular veterinarian. And if you don't have a regular veterinarian, we'd love to see you at Lakeview. Hello, this is Dr. Ray Ramirez from Lakeview Veterinary Clinic, helping your pets live the best life possible for as long as possible in the cone of shame. Yes, I know it wasn't because I was licking my paw or anything, but there are times when your own pet needs to wear one of these little... Hello, this is Dr. Ray Ramirez from Lakeview Veterinary Clinic, living the best life, helping your pets live the best life possible for as long as possible. And today, I'm wearing the cone of shame, only to demonstrate C for demonstration purposes. So I'm just going to set this aside so we can see this. So what we've got here is this little piece of plastic. You see our little tabs here. And in this particular one, there's just two sizes that we have. I just realized I don't have my jacket on.